Good afternoon. We, uh, I, so I spent some time doing my slides yesterday. And, uh, and the screen doesn't work, so. So we're doing a slideless presentation today. But thank you for coming. <clears throat> Good afternoon, welcome to my sauna. Do please feel free to remove all clothing. Make yourselves comfortable. I'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, career planning in the Power Platform. And uh, to give you a frame of reference, my name is Alison Mulligan. I'm the CEO of Maximus IT, which is a niche recruitment organization specializing in recruiting for business applications and Microsoft technologies. And uh, I have been a technical recruiter for nearly 25 years. I know I don't look old enough, it's fine. We'll just take it as read that everybody thinks I look young. Uh, I have recruited for the technology sector for a quarter of a century for large and small organizations around the globe. And uh, I've been specializing for the last three or so. I, I have no concept of time after the last 18 months. But for the last few years, I've been specializing in dynamics and power platform and business applications. <clears throat> and I am a D365 user and a confirmed power addict. And I am also the only recruiter in the world who's also an MVP, of which I'm quite proud. Woo! Um, I would love to bring your attention to the slide with all of the sponsors on it so that I can thank them <laughs> But a massive thank you to our sponsors. I'm fairly sure most of you know who, uh, who they all are by now. Uh, we've got quite a lot to get through in 20 minutes, so uh, I will do my best for you. To give you a frame of reference why um, you should be planning your career, uh, if any of you were in the Mercury session earlier, I said I looked on LinkedIn this morning, and today, posted on LinkedIn only, which is one source of finding new positions. Just on LinkedIn today, there was 2,123 power platform jobs being advertised, just for the UK. So the demand for power platform is incredibly high at the moment, and I'm sure every last one of you probably gets a recruiter outreach email at least probably once a day at the most, <laughs> but several times a week, I'm sure. Um, and those figures are only going to go up. So it's important for us to take some time today to think about your future and why that's important. So the great and long dead Abraham Lincoln said the best way to predict the future is to create it. And to that end, uh, the things that we're going to cover today is planning your career, moving forward in your current role, and growing your power platform skills. So to dive into these areas in more detail, the first thing I want to highlight to you is that you, you need to run your career like a business because your career is your business, right? Your career is more important to you as an individual than it is to anybody else. And any of those among you who are contractors, obviously this is something of which you're patently aware. But if you work for a large organization, you may have fallen into the thinking that it is your company's or your manager's responsibility to plan your career uh, and take responsibility for moving you forward as an individual. But it's not their responsibility, it's yours. It's up to you to do it. Bibs. Thanks for coming on time. Appreciate it. So in terms of your career planning, it's more important to you than anybody else. Nobody else gets the benefit of your career planning to the extent that you do. So it's important that you take it seriously. And the first step in planning your career is you need to understand where you are now and where you want to be. 
And when I say where you want to be, it doesn't need to be where you want to be tomorrow or next month or even in a year's time. All, those, all of those things are important, but it's also where you want to be in three years' time or five years' time or even perhaps where you want to end up. You know, it may be that your personal goal is that you want to be a CTO for a Fortune 500 company. And that's fine. That's great. That's what you want to do. And it's absolutely achievable for anybody and everybody. But you need to know how you're going to get there, right? So what you need to know is your as is and to be. You need to understand where you are now. You need to understand where you're going and what the steps are for you to get there. What is the training that you need? between now and then? What are the things that you need to learn? What are the qualifications that you need? What experience do you need to gain? And then part of the journey of getting there is to get involved with the community. There's a bunch of people in the community that will help you to get training, get certified, and to get uh, join study groups and such that will help you to get exams, get qualifications, and move your career forward. And we have some links to that in my presentation that you can't see, uh, but presumably everybody gets a copy of the presentation afterwards. So I have the links for you if you need them. You may, the reason it's important for you to understand where you're going um, and to have a, a plan for your career moving forward is if you're aware of something called the Bader meinhof effect, which is, it's like confirmation bias. Um, and if you don't have a, a plan in your mind and you don't know where you're going and you don't have a direction, then you are less likely to spot opportunities that come up whilst you're on your journey that will help you to get where you're going. For example, if at this point you don't know that you need to understand Java programming in order for you to become a technical director for an ISV, if you don't know that, then you aren't going to know that opportunities exist out there for you to learn that skill, which is something that you're going to need later on to move you into a role that you want. And if you're still following with me, that means that when jobs come up for Java skills, you won't look at those as being important unless you know that it's something that you need to learn along your journey. And if you know that it's something that you need, when the opportunity comes up, you'll recognize it as being important and put yourself forward. So moving on to where you are currently and moving forward in your current position, which is probably less important for some of you, but, and I, can't spend too much time talking about it, but very often I talk to people who say, I need to understand how to move forward in the role that I'm in currently. Um, and if that's a position that you find yourself in now, one of the first things you need to understand is what is the role that you need to get into? So going back to the previous plan, where are you now and what is the next role? What's the next logical move for you? Once you've identified the next logical move, the first thing that you can do is go to your manager or whoever is the relevant person for you. Have they just turned on the aircon? Or are we taking off? I hope it's the latter. Are you kidding me? We're all dying. Uh, so, uh, identify what the next logical move is for you. Go to the person who's responsible for helping you move forward in your organization and show to them how you deliver value to the company. Show what it is that you do where you go over and above just what's required of you on a day-to-day -day basis. Ask them what you can do to improve. Is there something I can do, Mr. Manager, to make your life better? Is there something I can do that would help the team to do something more efficiently? Demonstrate that you've planned out, demonstrate to your manager that you've planned out your career, that you know what your logical moves are and where you want to go, and tell them what it is that you need from them. And at that point, once you've identified those additional requirements with your manager, that's the time to ask for training, ask for a promotion, ask for a raise, any of those things that, that you think are right for the position that you're either in or moving to. Once you've done that, you need to agree some milestones and measurements. So any targets, milestones and measurements that need to be made along the way, get those agreed, confirm everything in writing, Thank you. 
confirm everything in writing. And this is the bit that I always get most pushback on, is everybody comes to me and says, oh, well, I had this conversation with my manager, and he said if I did X, then I would get Y. And I did X, and then I didn't get Y. And I said, well, did you confirm the conversation in writing? Did you at least acknowledge it on an email? And they're like, no, but we spoke about it. So you've actually got no recourse. If you do X and you don't get Y, you have nothing to say, hang on, this is what we agreed, right? And it's so important that you have all of this stuff confirmed in writing because it takes a very hard person to then go back and say, well, I never agreed that when you have it on an email, right? So always, always confirm everything in writing and then deliver on what you say you're going to deliver uh, and agree how you're going to review your progress. Like everybody thinks it's up to their manager to tell them what they have to do and by when and to, and to monitor their progress. But it, you're, it's not in your manager's interest to do that. It's in your interest. So you need to take responsibility for it. And the third stage of this slideless presentation is, uh, is how to increase your power platform skills. Um, and I think I recognize a few faces here, and I know a lot of you already know stuff about Power Platform, um, and you're already involved in the community. But the first thing that you can do, if you haven't done already, is to connect with as many people as possible in the Power Platform community, whether that's on LinkedIn, on Twitter, uh, on user groups, coming to events like this. The more people you connect with, the more help you can get on your Power Platform journey. Um, the next stage is to look and learn. There's so much content available to you in the public domain. Most of it is free uh, on YouTube, people's blogs, etc., where you can look at what other people are doing and learn from some of the content that they've posted out. There's so much available to you. You can literally learn to do anything from YouTube videos at this point. You could build a house or like design a car with YouTube videos. <laughs> the next thing to do is to build something. If you haven't done so already, attend one of the many App in a Day courses that are available to you. Um, there's uh, App in a Day, there's Power BI in a Day, there's Power Automate in a Day. I think there's PVA in a Day now, I'm fairly sure there is. Um, all of those things, although basic, if you haven't built an app already, they will at least get you through those early stages of building something. Once you've done the in a day session and you have a basic understanding of what it is you're building, then find a problem that needs a solution. So you could be working for an organization that's still using spreadsheets, for example, and maybe there's an opportunity for you to build some really rich reports in Power BI. Maybe there's an opportunity for you to even automate the information that goes into those reports using Power Automate. Maybe there's an opportunity for you to gather information using um, uh, Power Automate and Forms. And there's any, any one of a number of solutions you can provide. I guarantee you, every, you, all of you have either a problem at work or you know someone that has a problem at work or you have someone in your social circle who has a problem. You know, maybe they belong to a church and there is a problem with gathering membership information about members of the church and disseminating information. You could build a, a, da a power app to enable people to sign up as members of the church and disseminate information. But finding those real world problems and finding solutions to them is what's gonna teach you the most. Because those in a day sessions will teach you the basics, but it's not the same as actual problem solving. The next stage is to document everything you do. Anything you make, build, do, learn, make a document of it. If you build a power app, keep a copy of it. Make a portfolio as if you were an artist of some description. Um, any reports you build, keep copies of them, providing you can share that information without breaching any laws, etc. Then keep a, keep a portfolio of the work that you've done. And then spend time getting certified, like as much as you possibly can. And it's going to be really difficult without my beautiful slide. Just pretend it's here. There was a lovely slide with a whole list of certifications that you can do. Um, it's possible to get certified in everything. And the certifications run from like basic level up to like associate level 
um, and some of them are just knowledge-based certifications and some of them are on-the-job certifications like solution architecture certifications. So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Uh, does anyone have any questions? I was going to show you a bunch of wonderful links that you could go to to, uh, <laughs> to sign up for your qualifications, etc. Um, but obviously, I can't do that. But the important things, the key takeaways for this is you need to know where you're going. You need to have a plan, and you need to know what the stages are for you to take that journey. Because it's only by having that plan and knowing that journey that you can spot the opportunities that come up. And opportunities come up all the time. But if you don't know what it is you need to learn, you may miss an opportunity. The second thing is to always make sure that people understand, people around you, people you work with, people that you know in community, make sure that they know what it is that you're trying to do. Or make sure that they know that you're looking for certain types of opportunities and then they can help to bring information to you. Um, connect with people in the community. Make sure that you keep your network as wide as possible and do as many of the certifications as you can. And all of those certifications, put them on your LinkedIn profile, make sure that people can see that you're taking your career development seriously and that you're actually on a journey. So that's about all I have for anybody. If anyone has any questions, feel free. I'm not sure I'll be able to hear you. No? Then thanks very much for coming to my TED talk. I'm really sorry that we didn't have the slides. But uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Oh, yes, go. Yes. Right, so for those who may not have heard the question, the question was, if you're building a portfolio, how much of the information how much of it is yours and how much of it belongs to the company? What can you keep and use in your portfolio? And that, the answer to that, as Louisa Fries would be proud for me to say, is it depends. But there's going to be information in that report that's probably confidential. But there's nothing to stop you from building a model of that report with dummy data in it and just using that in your portfolio. If, if there's too much data that can't be included because it's confidential, Oh, okay. Yeah, so just, I would just build like a facsimile version of it, just another copy that you could use for your portfolio. Or just blank it out, or just don't tell anyone. That's fine. Don't, don't. Any further questions? No? Thanks, everybody. Yeah.